I'm not here to preach prosperity to you. Sigo hapa kuahubiria mafanikio. Because that's not my assignment. Kwa sababu hiyo sio kazi yangu. What's my assignment? Kazi yangu today. Leo hii is to bring a new hunger. Nikuleta njaa pia. So keep on thinking God. Kwa ajili ya vitu vya kina zaidi katika I want you to be on the keyboard. Ninaomba kama unaweza kuepo kwenye kina. And I want the praise and worship to come back on here. Na kama inawezekana kikundi cha kusifu na kwa kuwepo kwenye. We have a different worship service. Kwa sababu tutakuwa na ibada ya tofauti tena. Because the Lord said to me, kwa sababu Mungu ameniambia, He said I want you to worship. Nataka uniabudu and yet you are preaching. Wakati unaendelea kuhubiri. I have never done this type of move. But when I came in the church, when Mama was worshiping, I felt the presence of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said to me that we are so hungry for Him that we should release a sound. Na mtoto tuachilie sauti deeper worship. Ya kina cha kwa God. And then I kept on hearing a song. Na kisha nikaendelea kusikia wimbo. His name Jesus. Jina lake ni Yesu. And I just had Yesu. Jina lake ni Yesu. Jina lake ni Yesu. Yesu. Yesu my Lord. I want to make you smile. I want to make you proud.
There is no God like you. The Spirit of God is strong in our midst. I see the fire of the Holy Ghost.
And Father, even in this first day of July, first Sunday of July, we ask that you have your way. Take all the glory, Holy Spirit. Take all the praise, Jesus. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worship. Amen and amen. Please, you can have your seat. Can we celebrate Jesus? Come on, celebrate Jesus. Sunday by Jesus. Are you ready for God's word? To go tarry for the end of the month. But before I preach God's word to you, kabla siya hubiri neno la mungu kwenu, I want to appreciate your pastor, na peda ni mshukuru mchungaji wenu, and the first lady of this house, na pia mama mchungaji. God connected me and this man of God, mungu alitunzanisha many years ago, miaka mingi kidogo kuna, and I have longed to meet you guys, na nilikuwa ni na tamani kuweza kuona, for a very long time, kwa mda mbrefu kitoto, but God has made the opportunity, lakini mungu wa kasungu wa blango, in such a time as this, kwa mda kama huo, I want us to celebrate your senior pastor, as the Jesse Kuru Mwaka, I don't like the way you are celebrating, Man of God. I want to hear your voice one more time. I want us to celebrate our mama. God bless you, woman of God. And I want you to celebrate yourself for being here today. I don't like the way you are celebrating yourself. I said, celebrate yourself. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God you. What I felt in this church today is so prophetic. You understand it maybe six months from now. Because God is really with you. I've been to many places. And I know when God is with the people. And I can guarantee you Jesus Christ is with you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 verse 30 to 34 I'm married to one wife and four children and she's watching us. God bless my wife. God bless my wife. God bless my wife. You know, I'm trying to teach you wisdom. <laughs> you have to acknowledge your wife. <laughs> Amen. 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 It drives away the little foxes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10. Luke Akumi. Verse 30 to 34. Then Jesus answered and said. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came by the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Verse 32, likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Somebody say compassion. compassion. Verse 34, the last verse. So he went to him and bandaged him and poured oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. I'm preaching on what I title, Silencing Destiny Robbers. Destiny Robbers. Ukimia or Destiny Thieves. Silencing Destiny Thieves. 
kiukimia juu ya wazi au wanaoiba hatima zetu. I want you to understand life is a journey. Nataka utambue kwamba maisha ni safari. And when you are in a journey, na unapokuwa katika safari, there are different things na kuna vitu mbalimbali that surface itself. Ambapo vinaonekana vinaonekana. There are different situations kuna hali mbalimbali that come against you. Ambazo zinakuja kukumbana na wewe. God Mungu understands anatambua for us to be in the world kwa makwetu kwetu 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 face different trials tutakwenda kukutana na and because of that na kwa sababu hiyo god made a provision mungu alifanya njia and that provision na njia hiyo was the lamb of god ni mwana kondoo wa mungu which is jesus christ ambaye ni yesu kristo and the bible says na biblia nasema in revelation katika kitabu cha ufunuo chapter 13 verse 8 ule sura 13 sura that the lamb kwa huyo mwana kondoo was slain aliwawa since the foundation of the world so God saw that the problem that man will face will begin before even man come into existence so God made a provision and that provision was the Lamb of God which is Jesus Christ so the Bible said that the Lamb of God was killed was slain since the beginning of the world so I want you to understand that the solution is greater than the problem because God made a solution for you and I before the problem even started
of Jerusalem. Your pastor might be of Jerusalem. Your family might be of Jerusalem. And every time the enemy wants to destroy your life, he takes you away from the people. Now God has connected you with God. He wants to bring you in the place of isolation. But somebody said the devil is alive. Comfortability. There's a movement 
there's a movement in the realms of the spirit realms of the spirit the children of Israel because it was closer to the promised land but the Bible said God took them to the way of the wilderness so that he can teach them how to fight because life is a battle and until you train your hands so far there's certain victories that will never come so sometimes when God takes you to a journey look at the experiences and out of those experiences out of those weapons that God gives you to face more battles so David said it like this he said I have fought with the lion I have fought with the lion. I have fought with the bear. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I have experienced more battles than this Goliath. My talk is of somebody here. I don't know the battles you have experienced. But God is speaking to you. That today, God will bring forth your testimony. Because your testimony is revealed to your trials. And whenever your trials come, it's because God wants to give you a bigger testimony. Can I let you know today? Your testimony is already here. Oh, if you shout there, you shall receive it. If you shout there, you shall receive it. I want to show you three things. About destiny robbers. Number one. Three things. About destiny robbers. Number one. Destiny robbers. The street people of their glory. The Bible said. They stripped him of his clothing. So man. Who fell the mountains. The first thing they took. What's his glory? What is glory? Glory is God. Glory is the presence of God. Glory is what makes a woman. Who does not put on makeup? Who looks like a princess? It's the glory. It's the glory. Glory is what makes a man of God. When he said, Thus said the Lord. His voice does not stop. And does the law. There are manifestations. Glory is God's presence around your life. When the glory left Israel, the Bible said the priest Eli, Eli, Eli begin to cry. The glory has departed. The glory has departed. The glory has departed. Out of that encounter, uh, Eli fell and died. When there is no glory, everywhere is dead. Am I communicating here? Can I pray for two people? Anywhere they stole your glory, God is restoring it right now. It attracts favor. In a letter, what? And favor is divine partiality. That means you are not qualified. But because the glory of God is on you, because automatically they accept you. When you go to a job interview, maybe they are dead people that are interviewed for the same job. When you carry the glory of God, I'm not a branch. 
swore that I came towards you. There are kinds of good and not of evil to bring you into an expected end. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 2, it says, Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So, what is God saying today? No matter who took your glory, God is about to arise, and His enemies are about to be scattered. Maybe they took your financial glory. Maybe they took your financial glory. Let me slow down. Because the enemy mm. has blinded mm. the eyes of the believers mm. to think mm. prosperity mm. is of the devil. Mm. Many times mm. when a preacher is preaching, God is going to bless you. God is going to give you finance. Especially in our dispensation. The people become very nonchalant. Like, mm, a, a, a seed. But that's not the case here. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10:19. Ecclesiastes 10:19. It says money. Answered all things. Oh, let me talk to you. <laughs> Do you know there's a financial goal? Do you know that? Do you know that? No matter how spiritual you are, no matter how much we sing, no matter how much we dance, it took money for the mics to be on. It takes money for us to be here. No matter how cute you are, the clothes that you are wearing, more as a fact, you bought it with money. I'm not communicating here. You don't go to the shop. You don't go to the mall. And then you take the thing from the people. Now that's perfect. It doesn't work like that. You gotta pay. You gotta pay the cashier. And then they give you what you want. Some of us. We come to God. To the Oh, Father. Oh, God. You are a good God. I know you are a good God. Why did you know you told me to give the hundred dollar seed? But Lord, I have gas to pay. 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 I have 20. I think the pastor will love 20 dollars. And you too, you will accept it. Because you are a good God. That's the mentality. But my Bible says in Acts chapter 4, it says the Christians they brought all their possessions and laid it at the feet of the apostles. And when they laid it, when they laid it, the Bible said the church had no lack. So there's a financial glory. And when the devil steals that from you, you can be anointed. But anointing with that finance is an annoyance. Anointing. Anointing with that finance is an annoyance. That means that, in a manisha, imagine, imagine, us your pastors, I'm not saying us, are you understanding? Yes. Us, your servants, they see what to be sure. We are preaching right now. Two those no base. And then my shoes, like all of a sudden, the soul, in the soul, it soul, it comes off. In a token. Then I'm telling you, God is going to bless you. Nah. You are not going to believe that prophecy. Right. Because right. by the fact that my shoes does not reflect the blessings of God, it means that I'm not speaking right. Because God is 
anaweza kakikisha kwamba to be asleep kwa imelala na usingizi to be asleep kwa na usingizi singizi Singizi. You know, I have a mantle called the multi-dimensional mantle. I can minister to any kind of people. So, and I'm able to hear languages. And you understand? Yes, yes. 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 Praise God. It can be asleep. When your glory is asleep. You have to wake it up. Right. And how do we wake up the glow? We got to be on the altar. Let's see my two people. That's the mouth. Pray. That's the mouth. Get up. Get up. Get up. No. Baruka Shakatiya. Until you feel something in the inside of you, you do not stop praying. Because God gave you something precious. And so when the enemy wants to rob you, he comes and puts you asleep. When you are supposed to be praying, am I communicating? In Acts chapter 16, the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas, they began to pray. They began to Although we are in this prison, our glory will not be asleep. Other prisoners were sleeping because they are giving up on life. They say we just should die here. But there was something happening from Paul and Silas. They began to sing songs. They were praying. He said there are people here. 
21 of them. I'm going to put them to sleep. And I'm going to show them Jesus. And I'm going to show them hell. And I'm going to show them heaven. And I question the Holy Ghost. I say, I've never seen that before. Are you sure? And the Holy Ghost declined. And I said, the Lord said to me, there are 21 people here. You are about to fall asleep. You are about to fall asleep. You are about to fall asleep. And God Namungu, will show you heaven, bingo, hell, zim, angels, malaika, you have an encounter. Yeah. Na and my old pastor, who is my brother in the Lord, the, the, my old pastor, uh, he looked at me on the altar. He shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> the man of God, <laughs> the dimension is this. In his mind, I could read his mind. Yeah, that's what happens. Sometimes when you are flowing in the spirit, you can tell what you are doing. There are people here, I don't think they like me much. Like in this side. I'm just telling you. Like in this side. It's good to laugh in church. So, as I declared it, my brother, People began to sleep. What you can't do now? Eight. What you nane? Sixteen. Come in a sita. Twenty-one. Come in shirina moja. And ushers were bringing them. Now, I'm talking about sleeping. You can't do what you nane. They were um, um, snoring. What go on? What are coroma? They slept. What can I? At the altar. At the altar. They slept. They slept. I was preaching, they were sleeping. They were sleeping. And then all of a sudden, the Lord said his angel. His name is the helper of man. That's my other angel. You know, when I'm saying these things, it's for me. So I'm talking about my encounters. And the angel began to wake them up. And they will wake up. And they will be looking at us like they saw demons. <laughs> they are looking. And they once shouted. I saw his face. I never shouted. I repent. I said, what is this? I was taken to hell. And I saw. And I saw. And I said to the Lord. Is this real? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. All of them confess their revelation. And God said to me, He said, When I put you to sleep, I show you revelation. You know why I'm saying this today? Some of you have had sleepless nights. And it's because the enemy has tormented you so much. So tonight, you will know that I'm a prophet. You will have the sleep of the spirit. Oh, no, no, you are not hearing what I'm saying. You will receive the rest of the law. I have one more thing to say, then I'll wrap up, then we'll pray. Nicola, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, when destiny robbers attack you, they leave you half dead. But that's good. Because you are not yet dead. Where there is life, there is hope. So no matter how dead you might feel spiritually, like but you hate that issue, not, not as long as you are breathing, like, <laughs> it's in the breath of the Almighty. And I said, my put the Almighty in life. But tell hey, am I talking here? Because God Himself, in Genesis chapter two, at the bounds of being in verse seven. The Bible says He breathed. I said, it was a touch from a voice. To your your mother, your mother. Adam became a living soul, a living being. So you have the breath of God. If you look at the book of John, chapter twenty, verse twenty-two, he said, and he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. The Bible said in Romans chapter eight, verse eleven, he said, in the Spirit that raised Jesus. From the dead, I'm going to talk at the in you. He put a car to you. He shall quicken. Everything dead in you. He has to put my son. You don't have the son of my voice. Maybe there's some dead gifts. There's some dead things in your life. There's some dead ministries. God is about to bring it alive. Oh, I don't like this. Amen. 
kuna namba mbili of people in the church wale watu katika kanisa there is the office of the prophet kuna ofisi ya and there is the spirit of prophecy na kuna roho ya unabii and every one of God's children na kila mwana wa Mungu carries the spirit of prophecy yuko anabila roho ya unabii because kwa sababu Jesus Yesu is the spirit ndio roho of prophecy ndio roho wa so when you receive Jesus automatically apa apa you can see
The angel was pouring the oil. And even at one time in the administration, you wanted to speak what God was saying. Yes. But it's like something is inside of you. You are not even confident yet. What God is saying today, you are not going to show for your next season. Because God is giving you a prophetic grace. It's like fire will stop doing in your mouth. Everybody, that's the power of God, woman of God. I see gifts. Now that's the Be released. Is it okay, Father? 